Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking to you all about morphemic analysis, which is a teaching strategy that you take a word and you break it up into its root words so that you can look at it from the root. So you try to define the word by looking at the root. So for instance, de jure segregation. You look at de and you look at jure to better help you figure out what the word actually means. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing here today. So I am a social studies education major. I love history and that is exactly the kind of lesson that I was thinking of when I was doing my morphemic analysis project. So I'm going to be looking at the civil rights era. I was looking at why did they march in the civil rights era? Why did African Americans want to march? And I'm going to be looking at some of the different kinds of segregation that happened. And that's exactly what I'm going to be teaching students. But first and foremost, I chose a scenario of certain students that I was going to have in my class based off of a real life scenario that I actually experienced when I was a student in high school. So there were two girls in my class. Student A, she was from Denmark. She was an exchange student and she didn't know a whole lot of English, but she knew enough to get by. And student B was a student from France. And again, similar situation. She came to America when she was in eighth grade. She didn't speak very much English at all by ninth grade. Different story, she knew a little bit but it was still very difficult for both of them. And our school was a predominantly white Caucasian school, upper middle class district, about 24, 25 students per classroom. We had all known each other, so it was a little bit hard for them to fit in at first, not speaking a whole lot of English. So the lesson I designed is going to be able to include them in it where they don't have to worry about working with other kids who might be friends with each other and not necessarily know them. And they don't have to be worried about speaking or any of that because this is going to be a very guided and helpful activity for them and challenging enough for the rest of the class to do. So the first thing I'm going to do when I begin to teach this is I'm going to introduce the topic. And the topic is why did African Americans decide to march during the Civil Rights Act of the 1950s and the 1960s. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to present a video. I'm going to show them the video of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. And if they might not be so good with listening to language, listening to English their first time hearing, because I remember when I was taking Spanish class in high school, I was hard, it was hard for me to listen. It spoke fast, it was a different language, but I could read it. And the video I found, the I Have a Dream speech, it has subtitles included on it, big enough so everybody would be able to see it. So it is, I believe, a perfect video to show them. And that would be the first thing I do. Then I'm going to start presenting this PowerPoint. And the PowerPoint that I have, I am going to be showing a lot of images in the PowerPoint because the one girl I remember I was friends with, she's a visual learner. She was not good at reading. She was not really good at connecting words to other words, but she was better at connecting words to pictures, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing in this. I am catering it off of what their needs were going to be. So I have a lot of pictures in there and I also have a lot of root words. I have segregation, I have de jure segregation, and I have de facto segregation. And I am breaking those words up according to their roots. So segregation, I have it. Segregé, which, uh, which means to separate, and shun means the action to. So I'm going through each of those words. Those are my three key vocabulary words that I want them to learn. So they should be able to figure that out based off of the Latin roots and put that together. So that is the best way that I am using morphemic analysis in this. I am breaking up the key vocabulary words so that the students, not just everybody, the ELL students particularly, so that they can help to sound it out, to see how it looks, to see how it's spelled. And I believe that that will help them greatly. So after I go through this PowerPoint and I'm showing them what each of these words means and what each of these words looks like and sounds like, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the project that we are doing in class that day. And the first thing we're doing for that project is I am going to be grouping all of the students together in groups of two or three. And the two students that are ELL, I'm going to put each of them in a separate group with kids that I know would be helpful to them, would help with their input because you can't just randomly assign people to group members who might not be as helpful. So. The first thing I'm gonna to have to do before any of this is to get to know my class, get to know who's in my class, do I have help, helpers in class? So I will put them with students that I believe will help them more than anybody. So that is the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to place them in groups that I know will be helpful and everybody else will be placed in random groups. 
And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the directions, which I have on my PowerPoint. I am going to have each student, they're going to choose whether or not they want to research de jure segregation or de facto segregation. So the next thing I'm going to do, we are going to go through the directions, which I have on the PowerPoint. And after each student is grouped with each other, I am going to assign the task. And each student is going to choose whether or not they want to research de jure segregation or de facto segregation. They have that option. I'm giving them the freedom to do so. So after they choose which one they want to present uh, and research, I'm going to have each of them break off into their groups and they are going to give me three examples of de jure or de facto segregation. So each group, I'm giving them the option to use the internet to look it up. I'm giving them simply the opportunity to brainstorm it. It is going to be about a 15 minute activity where I'm having them do the research. And so I'm going to get, it'll definitely be enough time for them to list three examples of that. They can use the website, they can brainstorm. It should be pretty simple, pretty straightforward for them. And if I put the ELL students in groups, I'm, that's also going to give them an opportunity to, to have a little bit of say in what they do. Maybe if it's a group of three, each of them come up with one example. So it's making them participate, making sure that they participate in the directions. I'm going to make sure it's very clear. I will give them extra help if they need any extra help. I certainly will not be ignoring them. But then once they are done with their research, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have each group present their findings. And so here I'm going to show you a video of exactly what that is going to look like. All right, now that brings us to our last group, which is Austin's team. Austin, would you mind standing up and sharing us uh, what kind of segregation you chose? Absolutely. So I chose de facto, mm -hmm. and one of the reasons was housing, because of the black and white neighborhoods. I chose work, because more of one race worked for certain businesses, mm -hmm. more than other races. And I chose schools because there are white majority schools and black majority schools. Okay, okay, I, I like that. That's, a, that's very good examples of de facto. If we can remember de facto does not mean by law, it means by practice. So although it's not legal, it tends to happen anyway. So I, very good examples there, Austin, well done. Thanks. So you can see in the video here that we are a little bit limited on what we can do, who I can have in my video. That was my roommate. It's a little bit difficult to find a ninth grader to be in your video when you're living in a dorm. But I think we can all get the basic premise behind this. And that is that students will present it and everybody will get to see their presentation. Everyone will get the chance to speak in a, in a group of two or three. Everybody gets the chance to speak. Everybody will have a chance to have input in that and it's pretty straightforward. The other thing that I like about my project is that I'm going to have a thing in there where for each example that you list, you have to have an illustration for it. So my one friend, she was from France, she was the ELL student, she was a visual learner. I was a visual learner. I, I always had a hard time connecting words with words and I know she did as well. So I'm having them make an illustration for it so that they can connect the word with the picture. They can connect de, de jure with an image. They can connect de facto with an image. And I think that will be very helpful for them. And that is one of the biggest aspects of this is visuals and morphemic analysis, helping them to break down the word, helping them to connect that broken down word to the visuals. And I'm also giving them the freedom of choice here to choose what they want to do because Maybe the student doesn't feel comfortable researching something that, that maybe they don't want to research. They can choose between de jure, they can choose between de facto. I'm not really limiting, limiting them on there. They can choose between the two. But I believe that my morphemic analysis is going to help them a whole ton. It's going to break down the words that otherwise might be a little bit hard for them to me memorize because de jure and de facto both sound very similar. They both start with the same beginning. So if I can help them to connect the suffix or the prefix with the actual definition, that will in turn help them to memorize the word. So thank you all for watching. And that is my project. And I, uh, it's going to help them a great deal in my opinion. So thank you.